QuickBooks Desktop 2024 Unearned Revenue Monthly Invoicing. Get ready and some coffee because we're locking into some non-stop QuickBooks Desktop 2024. Here we are in our QuickBooks desktop sample company file we set up in a prior presentation using the enterprise version of QuickBooks desktop so we can focus in on the new unearned revenue feature. Under the view dropdown, we have the hide icon bar selected and the open windows list selected. Open windows open on the left hand side and the company dropdown, we've got the home page open as well. Go into the reports dropdown as we do every time company and financial looking at that balance sheet standard the balance sheet standard is going to be customized for the date range change 010127 tab 123127 tab let's go to those fonts those numbers and change them bringing it up to 14 for a little bit more visibility is that okay yes all right then let's do it Going to the reports drop down again, this time company and financial for the profit and loss, otherwise known as the P&L. We're going to then change the range, 010127. Let's go this time out to, let's go the all, let's go to, I think we're going to 103127. Let's do that. I think that'll be far enough because I want to see this one on a month by month breakout because we've been running our scenarios on a month by month. The current scenario was in June and then we'll do some of the payments uh, going forward. So it'll be a few months out as I see it now. So we're going to we'll just customize this fonts and numbers. Let's bring it on up to 14 as well. So it matches the balance sheet. We need matching reports. You can't be uneven. You can't have it all crazy unevenness. So there we have it. Let's go back to the home page and recall what we did last time. We've been thinking about the new unearned revenue feature for a subscription type business with this type scenario, that being a magazine type of business or a newspaper or more likely these days, some online software business where we get paid upfront for like an annual service. In our case, we just did five months out because that's we don't wanna take too much of our time here in the example problem to get the concept. So what we did last time is we had an estimate and then we had the sales order. So the sales order and the estimate aren't gonna be recording anything from a financial statement perspective. The estimate being an estimate of like a job or whether we wanna take the subscription, the sales order basically finalizing that. We didn't have to go up to the vendor side because we're not gonna be buying any inventory, but we want to get paid upfront in our case for five months of a service like a, like an application we're gonna be providing if it was software. So we skipped over to the receive payment. Now, normally when we enter a receive payment and would be the case under the old method, under the negative receivable method, this would then create a negative receivable because we don't have an invoice to tie it out to. But under the new method, we basically tied out the receive payment to the sales order which is strange from a financial reporting purpose because the sales order doesn't record anything to the financial statements, but it's a nice tool internally to then uh, record the received payment, not to a negative receivable, but rather to a positive liability. Now we did that for five months of, 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 uh, of our service that's gonna be whatever our subscription is, software let's say, and then each month that passes, we can now create the invoice the invoice now recording the revenue as we earn it as time passes and reducing the liability of the um, of the unearned revenue. That's the classic journal entry. Notice the other thing that, that we kind of want to see, however, is this information on the back end in the subledgers, which we usually see in the subledger related to the accounts receivable, which is a, a reason I think that uh, QuickBooks uses a journal entry, which will be an added thing. So let's go to the balance sheet and check it out here. Just so we can see what's going on. Here's the AR. If I go to the reports to see the report related to the AR customers and receivable, let's go to that customer balance detail report and let's customize it. So it's a little bit larger, a little bit larger. If we could fonts and numbers, let's bring it up to 12. 14 is a little too big for this one. Let's go on up to 12. Now notice this new one isn't here yet. Uh, because we didn't do anything for the receivable side. Instead, we created the new liability account, which is down here under the liabilities 
unearned revenue. So there's going to be a separate report now related to unearned revenue for a liability, even though it's a customer, which is usually tied out to an asset of accounts receivable. So if I go to the customers and receivable and I look at the open prepayments by customer, we can customize that report. We can bring it up to 12, let's say. Okay, okay, okay. So there it is. The whole amount is in there as of this point in time. Two subledgers, a little bit more complicated, but on the plus side, properly being reported as a liability as opposed to an asset. If I go into the company dropdown and we go in or customers dropdown and we go into the customer center where our customers hang out, we see that here we're working on this five unearned revenue and recall from last time everything looks pretty much the same as the old method from an internal bookkeeping standpoint and the internal bookkeeping if you used a negative receivable was quite fine right because you can facilitate the transactions quite clearly in here here's the estimate then we have the sales order and now the payment the only difference is when i go into this payment here it's a fancy payment because payment usually means it's decreasing the accounts receivable, but it's not here because it says prepayment, which means it's going to be doing something to the unearned revenue being tied not to an invoice, but a sales order. So that's a little bit tricky, but if that's your business model, because all of your stuff is subscription based, then, you know, that'll become fairly clear. You might not even use the other payment format uh any case. So if I go to this other one, this negative AR, same kind of concept. We have, we have the estimate, we had the sales order and then the payment, but this payment was a normal payment without that added little tag, which meant that it made a negative receivable instead of a positive liability. But from an internal perspective, it looks pretty much the same. And so if I go up top, the next thing that's gonna happen is we wanna make the invoices as time passes. So a month has passed, we've done whatever we're supposed to do, subscription model, let's go into the sales order. And the beauty of breaking out our sales order for five separate months is that now we can create invoices from it. So let's create an invoice, but I wanna create the invoice for selected items, not the entire thing. So I'm gonna to go to this one and say, okay. And then I'm just gonna say one month has passed. And so let's just do that first month has passed, boom. And so there it is, let's tab it out. This is going to go into 080127, let's say. And so one month has now passed for the invoice. What is this going to do? It's an invoice. So you would think it would increase uh, the accounts receivable. And then the other side, uh, the other side is going to go to uh, income for the third for the 35 increase accounts receivable 3771. Uh, 35 going to income and then the 271 going to the payable. But remember that we had that unearned revenue there as well. So it's, so the invoice, we would like to actually decrease the, the unearned revenue, but the invoice is usually tied to the accounts receivable. So you see the problem with these sub ledgers. So QuickBooks is going to create like another clearing account to facilitate this transaction. So let's see it over here. If I say, now we're going to create the invoice, uh, what would typically happen? Normally what happens,